in someone's house tonight. Uh, if you're, if this is the first video you're going to watch, probably not the best video to watch because it's a funny story actually. So I remember when I was there, it was actually my first ever video on YouTube. It just looks a mile out when you try and put it over. Really, really wonky out. Expanding contract now. They're getting expanding contract during the season. All right, good afternoon. It's uh, Tuesday afternoon. My name's Matt. Uh, I'm going to do it again actually. Look. It's nice, I haven't got it quite as good that time either. Anyway, yeah, this, uh, my name's Matt. This is um, What's Your Ordinary uh, channel. Uh, if, you're, if this is the first video you're going to watch, probably not the best video to watch because it's just a continuation of last week. Um, so if, you, if you're new, maybe go check out some previous videos or stick with it. You probably switched off already if you're new because I'm not really doing a very good job on that. But um, yeah, uh, it's Tuesday afternoon. I've got these doors on the bench from last week. So, you know, if you knew, pop up and watch last week's video. What I'll do is I'll flick you around now, actually. So yeah, last week um, I was making these doors um, and essentially I just didn't quite finish them. Uh, it, I was waiting for the paint color. Um, so I've got that now, it's uh, Farron Ball railings and you can see it looks very messy, but what the reason I, I couldn't assemble them because of the paint color is because these gaps are going to open because these are loose panels. They're going to open and sort of close. Expand and contract, Matt. They're going to expand and contract during the seasons. Um, so you're going to have the gaps are going to be on show. So I've, I need to paint them in the colour it's going to be. In this case, I could have painted them black because it's a dark colour. But, um, you know, you can have a quite odd set. So I've painted those out. Um, all of that's had two coats, all the panelings had two coats of primer both sides and I essentially now just going to leave those for a day or so, sand them back next time I'm in here and I'm actually probably just going to spray them all and I'm going to spray the shutters which I've also glued up. Uh, I've got one still in the clamps because I just didn't quite get round to undoing it but um, yeah they're done, there's that nice little detail, I really do like that actually. Um, and then oh, I've got the diagonal braces there to go on the back of them doors but I won't do them yet. Uh, I've cut the weather bars with the drip for the doors and I cut these little toppers for these shutters uh, just to go on on the job. There we are. Um, overhang a little bit. Yeah, just purely to keep the weather off the top of the shutters. Um, that's it really. That's what I've been doing for two days. They've not been both. They've both not been full days. So I've, I've decided not to film because... Um, when you film me spraying, you know, the prime ones. So it's like that interesting, chopping the hinges out, stuff like that. Like I say, go watch the other videos. Um, so to mo so I will jump back on these doors at some point this week. Uh, what else have I got on this week? I've got to start that oak porch, but the oak isn't ready yet. Um, so yeah, I've got to get the, hoping to get that sometime this week. Um, and uh what else we've got to do i'm gonna do a fireplace tomorrow um i'm gonna you know, it's not won't be a full day unfortunately because i put the kids up i'm gonna jump in tomorrow and i've just got to do it's for someone in the village just got to do a bit of a refurb on the fireplace so we're going to do that and i've got to do a repair and swap over a dishwasher from a kitchen that i made last year um on thursday and then i'll probably jump in here so i don't know how much of that i can film actually i haven't asked yet um yeah so bear with me tomorrow we'll jump on doing this fireplace probably not going to be the best footage because it is like uh, yeah but anyway um yeah speak to you tomorrow Hi, well, good morning it's uh wednesday morning i am in someone's house today <sighs> um yeah so i've rolled and scrolled the floor and basically i have made a bit of a start and i didn't film it and i am sorry the customer helped me just to get the log burner out um and what it was there was some ex this is the original opening by the looks of it but for whatever reason, at some point, someone reduced it. I don't know. Um, so those bricks have come out. Um, and I'm basically going to take this last bit of tile out, take this board out, and clean up this stonework. And we're going to put a cement board all the way around um, and retile the hearth. Um, yeah. I'm going to put it on time lapse, but it's not going to be that interesting, I don't think. I, I might not even bloody show it, actually. I don't know. Yeah, that's the job. And, and I've got a bit of oak to put across the top. This sadly isn't actually even going to get finished um, today because it's just too much to do. Like, I'm just going to make a start on it because um, I've actually got to reduce the piece of oak, put something in there, like as a, I mean, now as what really, for the oak to fix onto. I've got to figure all this out. Um, 
yeah, there's loads still. I've got to sort out the filling on the edge. Um, yeah, it's going to be an awkward one for sure to try and get done in the day. But we'll jump on it, see what we get done as ever. Right, that's it. That wasn't too bad. That was, um, got to be quick before I do the school run now. But, um, yeah, good five, six solid hours on that. Uh, so basically, yeah, we've seen I've chopped out. Unfortunately, I don't think the camera picked up everything, but basically, I had to chop all the stone back that side, chopped all the floor out, laid these, um, one, two, three, four cuts. That's hardy back a 12 mil all the way around. This green stuff is like a grit primer which I just prefer to use it where you couldn't really use PBR. A lot of people just use PBR without the knowledge of really what it should be used for. Um, it works fine when it re emulsifies when you, you know, when you um, stick into the wall and it reactivates the PVA, but it wouldn't work in this situation. Um, yeah, so I've tried to make it, it might look a little bit funny because the plaster is not right. I've tried to parallel each nib rather than get them level because it just looks a mile out when you try and put it level. It's a really, really wonky house. Um, and unfortunately, we're waiting for the, the stove company um, to fit the stove because they're going to sign it off. I've got to wait and see what they're going to say about the timber lintel because I'm worried if I put the timber lintel in, he won't get his registry plate in. And I need to put the timber lintel in before I plaster. And then I need to put the skirting board on. And I was hoping I was going to be able to come back here tomorrow afternoon or maybe Friday to do that. But until I hear back from the company, I don't know. So, yeah, kind of one of them jobs, isn't it, really, where you're sort of probably better off saying no, but it's in the village where I work and it's a lovely bloke I'm doing it for. I've done a few things for him. Um, yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. I'm trying to, you know, free out the four weeks of the year um, of the month focus on the joinery, the workshop, and then just re respond to stuff in the other time. Um, yeah. Right. Tomorrow, I don't know if I'm going to be bringing you along. I've got to change the dishwasher over on the kitchen that I did a few last year. So I've got to go there and change that. I don't know if I'm going to film it or not. Right. Um, see you at some point this week. Well, good morning. It's Thursday morning. Um, so this morning I've been to that dishwasher repair, um, which didn't really go to plan, didn't film it. Um, it's a funny story actually. So I remember when I was there, it was actually my first ever video on YouTube um, earlier this year, me going back to it. So it was a job, it was a kitchen that I um, made and fitted probably uh, mid-December, um, but they had to be in before Christmas. So it was a bit of a rush really. I don't really like putting myself under that much pressure. 
Um, and there's top it off. I don't have the kitchen still after that before Christmas anyway. But um, yeah, so, but the customer had saved a bit of money. They bought a load of the, all their appliances um, from an auction site and like a, a seconds auction site. They were pretty much brand new with the exception of they had no fixing kits or very limited fixing kits with them. And I soon worked out that actually, I think they'd been in show kitchens and whoever had removed them had just literally ripped them out because any fixings that were with them were bent, broken, like, or non-existent. Um, so this dishwasher never had the right fixing kit. So it never had the brackets to go on the top. It never had the right screws. And there's like a little, there's a Bosch one, there's a little spacer system that comes with that. Didn't have that. Well, I fitted it, I wedged it and fitted it. And I thought I'd done a decent job. And I did say to the guy, um, but over time, what's happened is it's moved on the right, it's come loose and it's moved a little bit and then the door hasn't shut properly. Um, but it, but they've still been using it because the door's being held off by the by the piece underneath the worktop, but it's not quite being held off enough that the dishwasher doesn't work. So steam's got in. Made the right mess of it. It's completely fixable. I turned up today, got because he's like, because he, he basically said, can you come and fix it? I said, yeah, yeah, I'll come and fix it. I, I said, look, just let you know, I think it's this, by the way. I think the reason your door isn't shut in, I don't think it's because the wood's expanded, because it has like swollen a tiny bit, but it's not stopping the door shutting. The door's not shutting because the dishwasher's moved. And I let him know that. And then he was like, we have been going on a couple of weeks. And he was like, I've actually got another dishwasher. Same size, same model, more or less. Can you put that one in? I was like, brilliant. Um, and he said, I'll pay you. So, you know, so I was sort of grateful of, because I probably would have, you know, in fact, if you watch this, I won't say anything. But yeah, um, yeah. so I turned up today, and as I was driving up to the house, I thought, it's like a long drive through this lane. I thought, is it going to be a brand new dishwasher? And I got that second-hand dishwasher, same problem, no fixing kit. I was like, so I haven't done anything today. He's going to, he's going to go online and try and get a fixing kit for it. I just said, I'll come back another time. He's ever so apologetic in that, but it means that I haven't really, I've basically, I've written today off thinking if that goes on all day, worst case than that, I've always come into the workshop. Um, today's one of those loose days I was talking about, and I've got a few jobs to do at my wife's shop, so I've got to put a few signs up. But I just thought, just to kill a couple of hours, I'm going to come in, I'm going to jump on these doors here. Um, so I'll just flip you around, so I'm going to show you something. Basically, we've got to put this, um, you can see I've just rebated the back of the door, actually. Look, so I've just... It was quite a nice little way of doing it, doing it the track saw, and then you just put the track saw on the bit. I might come up with a little system for having the track saw on the end for doing rebates. Probably won't. Um, but anyway, how do you brace the door of a gate? Well, ideally, I'm just going to stupid plaster off the front. Ideally, you want this, or you, you really shouldn't have that at less than 45. It needs to be standing upright more of 45 degrees, this brace. And it needs to be going back down to the hinge corner. So this is the hinge side. So I've chopped out the hinges. And basically, what you're trying to do is that hinge side's never going to drop because it's fixed to the frame. But that top corner and this bottom corner, that could drop because over time, there'd be stress, too much stress. If you imagine all the weight of this door here is being held by these joints and that joint up there. So what you want to do is sort of trans transpose the weight from this from from this side of the door back to the frame well the easiest way to do it because obviously weight travels downwards is to take the top corner over there and bring it back into the bottom corner where it's fixed to the frame via the hinge you can't do it the other way unless it's like some metal gates go the other way because i think they'll put relying on ten, on tension but this is in compression if, if you know what i mean so Obviously, if you see some metal gates, the brace goes the other way. I think that's because the, the wood, the metal is constantly in tension. It's, being, it's pulling that bottom corner up. It kind of would work with a timber door, but it wouldn't be as good. Anyway, the typical rule of thumb is you do it to the bottom corner of the hinge on a timber door. Uh, so if you see a timber door and it goes the other way, then it was done by a metal worker or someone that has not got a clue. Um, anyway, so <clears throat> basically... Sometimes they'll put two braces in. That's simply to get that 45 degrees. I'm just putting one in because it's actually quite a short door. Um, and we're sort of, because it's a, you know, if it was a taller door, then that would be too far the other way out the realms of the 45. It wouldn't be as strong. But just one going that way on that gate, on that door, sorry, is going to be absolutely fine because we're about 1400 here. It's a very short door. Um, yeah, and if, if you imagine, if I'd have put another brace in there, by the time I do that, 
they're actually under the 45. So, yeah, doing it that way. So I'm going to spin you around. I'm going to show you because there's a little bit more to it as well. So there's a little bit more sort of physics, is it? A little bit more science to it, if you like, of, of what of of why of, of, of what else you need to do to that brace. And some people know, some people don't. So I'm just going to spin you around, show you my take on it as such. Right. So what I see a lot of people do is they take their brace and they put it to the corner like that. So the, the corner of the door, the bottom, this is, remember this is the bottom of the door with the hinges, so the bottom corner, and they'll do the same for the top, but the bottom corner is in the middle of the brace, and then they'll get that angle right at the, other, at, the, at the other side, turn it a bit, and then they'll mark it there, mark it there, cut it, and you, you end up with you know, quite a uniform sort of cut. It looks quite nice, because that's in the middle. I understand why they do it, but it's sort of like, there's a, there's, a, there's a rule, really, that you shouldn't do that. And that's because what you're doing is, when you're doing that, is you're, transfer, you're transferring a lot of the weight, not so prominent on this door because of the angle I've got the brace, but you're transferring a lot of the weight back onto here when it's pushing, when it wants to sort of compress down, it will shove, sh shift this over. And if you're pushing that over, then at some point you're either pushing that out or you're moving this back into the frame. You're going to open this joint. So the sort of rule of thumb what I was shown anyway I mean there's probably old school joiners out there that have got like books on this and they you know in their workshop I have I do like to keep a few books but I'm just sort of going on what I've been told basically I mark up here about 25 30 mil it all depends really something like I don't ever go any more than 30 mil and then I'll actually get my brace obviously you want to make sure it comes further than the corner on there and then I'll do the same the other end. Yeah, sorry about that. It's just it, me going backwards and forwards and marking that. Just obviously, is, you know, it goes on forever. It's unnecessary. So basically, um, so then what you do, what I didn't explain is, sorry, that you want to, you, this, this, this piece here that carries through the bottom of the frame, if you like, you want to mark, carry on marking that all the way through there. You don't need to mark this bit all the way through because you've obviously got the, the joint. Um, yeah, so... Once you've got that marked where it strikes, then get your square on that. Nice sharp pencil. Make sure that is right. Yeah, it is, yeah. And you carry that on up there. You carry on this mark here, which is a continuation of this line up there. Then you want to carry on this on this side here. Then this, which is this up here. And then it's simply a case of then joining those dots. Bring them over a bit. I could use my new square for that, couldn't I? Um, anyway. Yeah, and then you just need like a little straight edge. Which I haven't got because I'm not very prepared. We'll use a piece of wood. Carry that through there. Carry that through there. And then you're cutting that out and then that will fit in there. You do the same thing at that end. Right then. So now hopefully that makes a bit more sense when you see it. Um yeah, what I'll do is obviously I'm gonna route all these edges just so you know, so they're all you know, I don't ever really want to get these flush. I like it to be like a break point for the paint. Um but anyway. All the weight now is trans is, is coming off here, which I know is putting. Don't get me wrong, I know that's putting. Let me just move you down a bit. I know that's putting pressure on this joint. But it's putting pressure on the joint to come down, and this mortise and tenon, well, it's a domino, but the a mortise and tenon obviously is designed to be, you know, if it, if it can be opened up easier than it can be broken down. So it's putting a lot of the weight on there. We are putting some of the weight on there. Um, I guess I could have put a bit more on there, but that's just what I was always sort of showing, 25, 30 mil, you don't really want to go any more than that. 
Um, and then for those that might say, oh, do you want to put an extra, you know, should I not put a middle brace in and then put them in like that? The only problem with that being is my middle brace. If I'd have marked a middle brace out, that's the centre line. So brace thickness of the brace round about here. And then 30 minutes from that, 30 minutes from that. Putting two of those in, that doesn't, you know, it doesn't look, it might not look it, but that is actually um, under or over, what would it be? It would be, um, that's not, it would be under 45. And you really, you want to stay on the plus side of 45. If you go under, then you're, it's going to get, it starts to then start working against itself. So really the sort of, the way I understand it, the higher up, the better. Um, what I have seen some people do before, I've never actually done it myself, is if you can't quite get that, um, if I can show it here, yeah. If I couldn't, let's just say, you know, I, I did want to put it close to 45 and put it in at that. If I couldn't quite get 45, you can cheat the rails a bit to get closer to 45 by chopping them, by chopping them in at an angle into the bottom. Um, yeah. I've just never done it, but yeah, you can basically adjust, it's hard to describe really, but you can adjust how much you, so it'd be like that, wouldn't it? You'd adjust how much you would have the angle of this by sort of cutting a joint into here, which alters it, because it's, although you're keeping the angle the same, you're transferring how the weight hits it, I guess. I've just seen it done, or that, or they've done it because I've always assumed that's why they're doing it, but maybe it's to make a stronger joint. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one, but it is a lot of work to obviously cut that in. Then at some point, you've got to quantify how much you weaken in the bottom bit of the door by cutting that in. Anyway, that's enough waffle. I'm going to get these in. Go do that other job. Um, yeah, and I think I'm going... Yeah, and then if I get time, I'm going to go through the costings of this because I was going to do it last week, but I didn't. I really got to get a move on, otherwise I'll be here, here all day doing it. I don't, you know, this is this job's done now, as far as I'm concerned. Although I haven't, it'd be interesting for me to work out the money because I haven't actually worked it out yet. Um, but yeah, so if I get a chance, I'm going to stand the doors up and have a little chat to the camera because I know you like that. All right, speak to you in a bit. Right then. Firstly, apologies if that's in the shot too much. I have to have them that low to collect the dust. Um, this is where we're up to so far with these doors. Um, so if you watched last week's video, you'll know that I spent pretty much all of last week on it. And at some point during the video, I mentioned that I was going to go through the costings and I didn't. And that's simply because the video ended up being so long that any talk I did on the costings, I just didn't include it. Um, so the costings, basically, for me to have brought all this to Peely and I've got some left over, and you ideally want to always have some left over, it's 14 cubic feet. Now, for me to get that, that's £593.74p. Um, that's rough sawn to Peely, which then I machine. Um, I could buy that machined to the thickness I want, um, or the width, the thickness, all machined and planed for every item, and almost, I think as well, cut to length, that worked out around about 16, 1700 pounds to get all that delivered. But what that wouldn't have done is that wouldn't have done any of the joints, any of this bead in detail, any of jo any joining panels, because these weren't joining, so they're too wide for a panel, any of, say, this machining, um, the weather bar machining. Um, fair enough, I could have brought a sill perhaps, but it wouldn't have included any of the machining for the frame, and it wouldn't include any of the um the jointing as such you know this you know the and also the paneling wouldn't have included that admittedly i probably could have specified getting that done if i'd have worked it all out on a calculator but the reason i haven't done is because these jobs really you need to sometimes have a little bit of um, allowance for error as you go and, and, and you know that's really where the art is really and just adjusting things as you go if i'd have tried to have done it all on cad and got it delivered as a kit and then glued and assembled it, I'm sort of fully committed then that if I make a mistake or I've made a mistake, I've then got to stop and machine something and I haven't really saved any time because you machine things in batches. So I think I probably spent four days last week just solid machining, fitnessing and planing 
before I did any look at assembling or dry assemblies or domino joints. So for me, I think that's worth it. Now I'm 31.25 an hour. That's work translates to basically 250 pounds a day. Right, so, so far we're on 48 hours. Um, that 48 hours has basically got us to everything you see here. So that includes the machining of these tops, all, everything's assembled, some of the pre-painting I've already done, um, I've chopped out for the locks uh, and the hinges, etc. Um, we're pretty much, I'd say, 95% all sanded and ready for final decorate, for priming and final decoration. So I'm 31.25 an hour, that's 1,500 pounds for the 14 hours. You've then got your 593.74 on top of that. Plus I've also then got what I think is gonna be another 16 hours, another two days to finish this basically. But that's where I can't really afford now to just spend two days solid on it because that won't be two days because of drying times and things. So this will just get left now, benched, pardon the pun, and I'll, when I'm either in here doing this porch or on other jobs and I've got a few hours like today, I'll come in and I'll, you know, I'll take it all up to the paint room. I'll start priming it, knocking it back, top coating it. Um, and then I've also got the fitting to do, which I've got a schedule in. So I reckon all that is 16 hours work, like bare work. You've then also got uh, 181.25, which basically covers the few dominoes I've used, a little bit of glue, paint, hinges the lock not the handle they're supplying so thus far to get to basically these to get all, all of this installed on the job the cost is 2774.99 you know you've got to ask yourself if you can imagine you've seen my work you know if you've been watching the videos you know there will be it will have a finish if you can imagine all this finished on the job and that's the that's the cost of it you've got to ask yourself then what would you charge what what what, what would you want for profit because that just covers my costs for essentially running the van um you know renting this space and upkeep on my basic tools but on top of that i need to make sure that i've got upkeep for the slightly bigger machines um and really profit in my business so that i can move forward so I'd be interested to hear what, what anyone that does this for a living, or just if you would, you know, do you think that seems like a lot of money, the two seven seven four ninety nine, 99 um, Because that is just the cost. That's just the cost including my wages, what I anticipate it to be. Obviously, I've given a price for this job, uh, which I'm not actually, you know, I probably will tell you the price, but when I fit it, I think I'll give the price. And I think that's probably the right thing to do because in between now and then, I might well... You know, you know, might, might just, I might spend a bit more time on it or a bit less time on it. Um, and the other reason you want profit in it as well, when they're doors, these are items, and I think I've covered everything, but in two or three years' time, if they've got an issue with that door, they're likely to ring me up. Um, now, two or three years, but by that point, if I go in and they've not painted it and looked after it, then it, it becomes their problem. But if there's something fundamentally wrong that I've done or even further down the line, um, then I'm sort of liable for that. So that's why you need your profit as well. Yeah, so I just thought it'd be interesting to hear from you to see what you would charge for a finished job of this. So it's four shutters, a set of double doors, inner frame, um, yeah, fully fitted, fully painted, all bespoke, made to order, fully finished, job in. What would you charge? Um, I'm going now to another job, which I'm not going to film. Film me tomorrow on the fireplace. Right, morning, it's Friday. Another school run day, so it's about quarter past nine. I've been chatting to the customer. Socks are on. We're in the front room. Going to protect it all. Whack you in the old... I mean, look at this for technology. We're going to whack you in that. And we're basically, we've got to get some timber in there so I can frame and build, put this lintel in. Chop out the plaster if I need to. Wrap with the oak up bond it all then um because the the it's bare oak and the plaster will react with the oak so i've got to wrap it all up unfortunately which is gonna be a bit of a bore like once all that's in then i can maybe grout skirting board then i can come now i can start skimming so it's a bit of a process you've got to get in the right order because you've got to let the bonding go off um etc obviously you don't really want to be grouting before you plaster but we just have to 
But it's only a tiny bit, isn't it? But um, anyway, and do a bit of prep work, like the yarn with the skirting boards on to your bastard, so I better, I might as well just um just get them cut. They're going to be a nightmare actually looking at them, but um, anyway, yeah, time lapse, that's what it's going to be. And that's it all done um it's all right doesn't it i think so is that going to be you know what i'm saying is it going to be we'll see or you'll see i'll see we'll all see yeah so basically those that watch the channel know that i i can plaster so i, I was actually up until the last minute going to skim that it's going to plaster it all um and you'll notice that i protected the lintel um that or the fake lintel that lintel actually was an existing lintel he had and he He'd stripped it back to bare oak, the customer, and bare oak and plaster um, bonding or skim. I think it's the alka alkali in it um, that leaches all the tannins and it will go all black. Even water will probably make that go black. So you've got to be very careful. So that's why I've taped it all up. And then the filler kind of went on so well and the bonding, I've done such a neat coat of the bonding. It dried so well. I just thought I'll get some filler over that. Um, skirting boards, I actually <laughs> took a picture of that, those skirting boards, they're on opposite ends because you can see there's a slight difference in the nib, I mean I've, I've done what I can, but that bit of skirting board was over there and that was over there, we've got different profiles going around the corners, that's, there's a bit that's been fudged into there, 
this bit's a bit different on here. That was always fudged in. I've, I've had to fudge it back in. In an ideal world, you'd remove the skirting board all the way around the nibs. But the problem is it's diff that bit of skirting board on there is different to that bit of it on there and it's a different height. So whatever, and you can't have two different bits on the face. So I sort of like, I mean, there probably is a better way of doing it, but yeah, he was more than happy with what, what I've done anyway. So that, that's the bottom line. Um, yeah, and we've grouted. We're done. Sort of over explaining it now, but yeah, looks pretty looks pretty tidy, I suppose. It's just, unfortunately, the skirting boards have got bits of wobbles on, but we've got, what do I do? You know, th this whole opening across here is about 25 mil out of level. And I'm trying to cheat and make things work. And also to make it worse, everything's twisted at different angles. And if you know anything about this, when you've got something that's twisted, it will, at certain perspective, perspectives, it will look out of level when it's not. Um, it's just part of it, really. Uh, it's part of building, really. Sometimes you have to walk into the room and see what's right by. So I, I kept standing back here and looking at it. It wasn't 100%, but then when I stood here and adjusted it for what looked better there, it looked worse from from this perspective. That's life, you know. Anyway, I think he'll be happy with it. Um, lady seemed pleased before she went to go pick the kids up. So, yeah, another week done. Um, has it been a good week? I don't know. Not really. Uh, oh, and that oak porch I'm doing, it's been postponed for four weeks. Basically, I've got to hold my hand up. I cocked up. I got the pricing wrong. I did a rough quantity per cubic foot for the oak, and I got um, the guys at Glenmere's to supply me a cost. I don't normally get stuff costing, so I know roughly what the costs are. But because of the sizes of that oak, I wasn't familiar with those costs. You normally over-egg it, and I thought I'd over-egged it, and then they gave me the quote back, and it was like, it was a lot out. It was probably, I think my materials were probably, um, I think I was about £700 out of materials. <laughs> So it would have worked out actually that my label was 750 so i'd have been doing it for nothing so i had to email the customer and say that i'm really really sorry i will meet you at a point i'll knock a few hundred quid off the label and i'll just work late because i have given her a quote but i said before i go any further i need you to agree that and she's just gone look i just need to process that and maybe put a bit more money to one side or something so can we postpone it for four weeks so next week i'm going to be jumping on the next job i was doing which is fitted furniture wardrobe so slight change of plan but I've got enough work so you know and that's the beauty of you know jumping on and doing things like this like i said leaving that one week free a month i sort of highly recommend that because you're then being able to respond to people and for years i've just been saying oh i'm too busy i'm too busy and it's embarrassing telling somebody you're booked up for a year because if you're booked up for a year then a your pricing's shot b you're not responding to the current market See, you should really, from a business point of view, be employing somebody. So I've sort of changed it a little bit because I don't want to employ anybody. I've just thought, well, I'm not, I am booked up till March, I think, next year, but that's only because I've got one week free every month, you know? Um, anyway, thanks a lot. Really appreciate the support. Really, really appreciate the messages. Have a good, um, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, see you next week. Me again. Uh, just got home and just thought I didn't actually go for one detail I didn't go for on that job and for anyone that is picking out details and looking at stuff you notice I didn't use a plasterboard bead I've done this sometimes I've done it before with MDF as well not that you put MDF in the fireplace basically that was 12 mil hardy backer board that I might at the edge because the hardy back is so hard and, and dense and stable um, it's mitered on the edge maybe like 2 mil left on the square bit and then I just plaster or fill to that and that's simply because if you put a bead on, you've then got to transfer the filler around the corner onto the hardy backer, and then you're putting filler or plaster inside the fireplace. And I kind of feel like yeah, it's probably going to be all right, but if it cracks and peels off, it'll look crap because it's on the corner, isn't it? Uh, some people put a stop bead on, but again, you see the seam. You can decorate a spot out. It's only a minute detail, but it's the sort of detail I like to share. See you later.